During 75 years, many have tried to make sense of the Moses Cleveland trees, but not one map has been made. The Forest City Working Group has a chance to correct this mistake. We could get about 200 trees inventoried, photographed, and mapped during the coming year, just in time for Cleveland's Super Bicentennial in 2021. Here's how to map a dynamic portrait of the Moses Cleveland trees. Let's start with a salute to Arthur Williams, who began the trees program in 1946 while he was researching the structure of local forests. Williams chose Moses Cleveland trees to reflect the diversity of the native forests, a perspective lost in later designations. We must bring back the forest framework. A few words about context. I see Moses Cleveland trees as three things, as an assemblage of sites, as a mid-century cultural artifact, and as a legacy for the future. We, the Forest City Working Group, are well-placed to send on the legacy. To do right, nevertheless, we must know the assemblage and comprehend the artifact. Mapping is key. For mapping, the site is the unit of analysis. Indeed, the site matters more than the tree. The trees are living things, they all eventually die to leave no trace. The tree site, therefore, becomes the legacy. The site is the means to preserve, comprehend, and send forward. In the following slides, you'll see the means to recover lost sites from older maps and why curating historical photographs is so important. Finally, I'll use preliminary data to illustrate the changing intent of the tree surveys 1946 to 1986. Some background on why locating Moses Cleveland trees is always a trial. The original plaques are of little help. Five tree surveys produced six different plaques. None of them included a catalog number. The 1946 plaques were aluminum and made to last. Still, they have been vandalized and the trees die. As the Early Settlers Association took over in 1970, they switched to plastic plaques. Few of these survive. The 1984 plaque is a problem. 1984 was the penultimate survey, just six trees were designated. I visited three sites, two trees are down, one stands without a tag. The 1984 plaque remains an enigma. Plaques, it seems, are a poor way to identify the Moses Cleveland trees. Recording and publishing tree sites is better. Here is a basic Moses Cleveland trees data table by survey year. Let's focus upon the bottom summary row. I have evidence for 261 trees. There are more out there, we will find out. The mapped column has two totals, those put on a map by any means and those in parentheses by Cartesian coordinates. About 30 sites currently have coordinates and to the right, about 30 sites have photographs. That is about 12% in each case, not good. For 2021, we need to up the numbers for coordinates and photographs. Here is my site's spreadsheet displayed as a graphic. It has three sections, location, metrics, and condition. At right, the large years mark the final entry for each survey. In the location section, black type, note that the 1946 and 71 surveys rely on meets and bounds location descriptions. In 1976, site location changes to street address, the meets and bounds entries trail off. Moving to the metrics section, green type, focus upon the 1946 entries. Notice that in the first metrics column, the species name makes for a jagged pattern, many different species. In the 1971 and later areas, species designated becomes almost solely white oak. The species column entries form a smooth pattern. Back to location. The coordinates column with the arrows is nearly empty for all surveys. With your help, the blank space may be filled in next year. Now, let's see how coordinates can be determined for several troublesome 1946 sites. Williams made good maps for two high density locales, North Chagrin and Lakeview Cemetery. The North Chagrin map holds points for 14 large trees in relation to local ravines and trails. Williams's trail lines can be superimposed upon a current trails map. The courses match up nicely. That pair can be geo-referenced on Google Earth. 
With this composite, I have ground truthed several remaining Moses Cleveland trees. I assume that locations for the down trees are similarly well recorded. I turned to Forest Hill Park in East Cleveland, which received 17 designations in 1946. Finding the sites is difficult. The park includes the Forest Hill Estate Great Meadow, a magnificent, if strange, place. Here, a rarefied oak forest took to the Bluestone Plateau above Dugway Brook. In the 1870s, Rockefeller cleared out the understory here. He created an oak openings type landscape where none should be. 150 years later, the oaks have matured without forest support. All is degrading, including many of the 17 Moses Cleveland trees. Toward restoring the Great Meadow Forest, Elsa Johnson and Victor Lucas have inventoried all of its trees. And Dan McLaughlin has searched for Moses Cleveland trees on the meadow and in other parts of the park. The combined work has helped to locate four sites. A few more may eventually be pinned down. Clegg Park is another anthropogenic oak openings landscape. Williams designated seven trees here. All the plaques are lost, finding the trees is a chore. In 2012, Lakewood resident Paul Blonsky searched the park and came up with five sites. I have rubber sheeted Paul's sketch map to make it fit the locale, but have yet to ground truth the points. Obviously, site number five, circled in red, has been lost to construction since the map was made. I also want to acknowledge Will Krause of Westlake, who has helped locate Moses Cleveland trees in all of the Northwest suburbs. Here is a photo of a 1946 tree labeled White Oak at Cadell House. Can the image be used to locate this site precisely? The tree stands next to a brick building. If it is the old Cadell House, we are in luck. A corner of the building appears at the left, and the windows are not the type to grace a front facade. We are probably looking toward the rear of the building. Here are a couple of aerial views of the locale on Detroit Avenue at West Boulevard. Current view at bottom, a 1927 shot lies at the top. In 1927, red shading indicates brick buildings, which include the old Cadell House. There is only one place where the tree could fit in relation to a back corner, Right there, got the coordinates. Let's talk more about photographs, which are second only to location for understanding Moses Cleveland tree sites. As the first trees were plaqued in 1946, a professional photographer got nice publicity shots for about a dozen. None of these trees were identified, but in scrutinizing meets and bounds description, I have nailed them all. Moses Cleveland trees have been featured in local print media, sometimes with photographs. An example is a Plain Dealer article of September 1984 during the penultimate survey. The piece revisited several 1976 trees, including these two now downed white oaks. The article also featured this stunning white oak at Southwest General Hospital in Middleburg Heights, also now down. A picture is worth a thousand words. Each historical photograph captures the essence of a unique tree representing our time and place. Historical photos are, therefore, the most we will ever know about individual Moses Cleveland trees. Now, let's get to mapping, as may be done with the preliminary data. Williams used two physiographic features to characterize the native forest elevation and topography. Here, elevation is presented as three red diamond datum points, one for Lake Erie and one each for high points on the east and west heights areas. Topography is given as contours for two major beach ridges, green and orange, the Portage Escarpment base, pink, and the Cuyahoga Valley floodplain, blue. Upon this base, we can map the ways in which tree designations evolved during 40 years our dynamic portrait. There are two patterns I'd like you to see, a northwest suburbs bias and a white oak trend. 
For the duration of the Moses Cleveland Trees program, the Northwest suburbs garnered most designations, Lakewood, Rocky River, Bay Village, Westlake. The 1946 layer shows many trees aligned along Lake, Detroit, and Lorraine roads. On the east side, only Chagrin River Road shows a similar focus. Strange that the leafy suburbs of the east side heights were poorly represented. Now the White Oak Trend. To the extent possible in 1946, Williams designated Moses Cleveland trees from a native forest perspective. Here, placemark colors indicate tree species. The placemark scatter is colorful. White oaks, like yellow, dominate, but there are good numbers of lesser species. To the 1946 trees, this slide adds the 32 tagged in 1971 by the Early Settlers Association. The results basically recapitulate the 1946 Northwest suburbs bias. White oaks are now more significant in the assemblage. The 1976 survey added 70 more trees, most in the Northwest, but with a good number on the Southwest County flank. At this point, more than 90% of the designations were white oak, the easiest old tree to find. To some, the Moses Cleveland Trees Program had two phases. The Williams phase of 1946 established a Northwest bias and, in its 150 designations, represented the diversity of the native forest. The Early Settlers Association phase, 1970 to 1986, carried the program toward the Cleveland Bicentennial with more than 110 trees of a different nature in different places. By 1986, nevertheless, the trees were essentially a parade of white oaks. In closing, let's review that the Moses Cleveland trees may be seen in three ways, as an assemblage of sites, as a mid-century cultural artifact, and as a legacy for the future. Mapping the sites will help us preserve the assemblage, comprehend the artifact, and send these trees to the future. The task ahead is to identify as many of the 260 tree sites as is possible. The work is labor intensive. With many trees now gone, photographs are the best means to preserve the sites. All sites need to be photographed, even those that no longer hold trees. A reasonable goal is to retrieve good locations for up to 200 known sites. All Early Settlers Association sites should be visited during 2020, and as many of the 1946 sites as is reasonable. If trees or stumps are in place, coordinates, photographs, and diameter at breast height should be recorded. I'd like to see photos for up to 150 sites, trees dead or alive, including any plaque on or off its tree. Thank you for your time. Let's develop a field plan and get to work.